Hello, I'm Jonathan from Shooting Stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to strip and reassemble a Glock 17 Gen 5. This Gen 5 is one of the very early ones that came with this cutout that offered no value to anybody. Apparently it was intended that if you have a sticky mag, you can get in there and remove it, but uh, it went away faster than toast gets cold, so uh, clear an indication that nobody loved it. As always, first step is to remove the magazine. Make sure the magazine well is empty. Check the chamber that there's nothing inside in a safe direction, pull the trigger. This is standard as it came from Glock, so the trigger is still a lot heavier than my competition pistols that I'm used to. Retract the slide ever so slightly. If you go too far and you hear the click, the trigger will come forward and require an extra depression. Pull it back just three or four millimeters. The takedown lever, push it all the way down from both sides and then the slide is free to come forward. On the Gen 5, there are cutouts in the slide that allow these two to separate much earlier in the disassembly travel. On the earlier models, you have to remove the slide all the way to the front. The Gen 5 has got a double captive recoil spring system and the barrel is easy to remove. The slide itself is very similar to all of the uh, earlier generations with the obvious exception that this plunger has been shaped differently. The previous ones were nice, kind of like an oil drum shape, and this is uh, different, but the rest of the internals are, are remarkably similar. In front of the firing pin, there's a little piece of plastic visible that you want to depress in order to relieve the pressure on the back plate. When you remove the back plate, be sure to keep your thumb over the opening so that the extractor depressor plunger and the firing pin don't come shooting out. The firing pin shouldn't come shooting out, but this guy can if you don't keep your thumb over there to retain it. For 9mm, this is black. The 40 cowls are white. Um, I don't have any of the others, so I can't tell you what they are, but I imagine the 357 would be a white one like the like the 40. To remove the extractor, a little bit of pressure off there. The extractor can easily be removed. Where does the extractor go? Over there, over there. And then turning this upside down removes the firing pin safety with its spring. The spring can be removed or not. Just make sure you keep, the, keep them together. Here the slide is as disassembled as it generally needs to be, with the exception of the front sight that is held in place on the later generations with a, a little hex nut. Um, the earlier ones were staked in place and the rear sight is pretty much the same as it always has been in the dovetail. <clears throat> so that's easy enough to, to clean. To, take, to disassemble the uh, internals from the frame, also pretty straightforward. Start off by removing the, the pin from the trigger, trigger housing and then the pin from the front uh, that holds the entire trigger mechanism in place. This system holds that, is part of what retains the, this pin and it needs to be moved a little bit just to free things up and allow the pin to be removed. You'll see there's two notches 
in here so the pin is reversible there's no doesn't matter which way it goes but those notches they secure the pin in place to prevent it falling out through the tension provided by the slide locking lever this would on earlier generations come out first on the later generations it uh, comes out after the locking block is removed in fact it comes out together with the trigger assembly it goes on the front of the trigger assembly and unlike the earlier models which had a coil spring the gen 5 has got an entirely different spring system internally here but the trigger and trigger bar remain much the same with some small adjustments in geometry and the way it's pressed out of steel the earlier generations required a bit of leverage going underneath this, but the later generations have got a, a bigger hole allowing this punch just to go in from this side and push the connector out. You're normally not going to need to take this apart any further, but if you do, just be sure to watch the, uh, the springs and how they're assembled, but this is adequate for normal cleaning purposes. The slide uh, locking lever has changed a little bit from the earlier ones, which had a leaf spring in, in, in this area. It's now got a coil spring underneath. Not normally something that I would take out for cleaning. Um, any solvents that get in here will easily uh, dissipate. So if you do want to remove it, you need to compress the, the recoil spring. Um, a flat screwdriver is usually easier than the block take down tool. I normally use the flat screwdriver for removing the mag release. There's a bent wire on the inside that gets compressed when you depress the mag spring or the mag catch. Release the tension on the catch and try and lever the, the spring a little bit to the rear away from the catch itself. Fairly simple once you've got the knack and then the whole system can can come apart. So apart from this, this is everything that's uh, built into the Glock frame now been removed and um, the whole lot can be washed. I normally wash my uh, pistols in hot soapy water, rinse them in fairly hot clean water to get rid of all of the detergent. Um, that heat then allows once it is removed from the rinsing water and dried off to, to dissipate or the heat is uh, dries the, all the parts off. A compressor can be used to blow them off as well. Otherwise, leave it in a safe location um, overnight to dry and reassemble the next day. So reassembly is pretty much the reverse of uh, what we've just done. So I'm gonna start by putting the magazine uh, catch back, the thin, part with the serrations is where your thumb's going to press so if you're left-handed and you want to do change magazines with your left hand thumb it will go in that way uh, it's a completely reversible i'm right-handed so i want to push it in from this side and i'm going to install it from the opposite side i need to lift the spring out of the way to get the mag catch in so once i've got the spring over the top of the catch it's a simple case of move it to the side and it will naturally flick into place and you can verify that spring tension is there by depressing it and seeing the return i need to reassemble the trigger system first the connector goes in all the way and the trigger system needs to be hooked in under the little hook of the gen 5 spring system so i install it hook it compress the spring slightly 
and make sure that the cross piece on the trigger bar goes into the notch here to ensure the drop safety is, is going to be working. This can be installed separately or as part of the trigger unit. I always prefer once I put the mainspring, uh, the, the trigger housing uh, back to install this pin because it's easy to forget. And something that I have done in the past. So with the trigger and the slide, ambidextrous slide stop in place, the locking block goes in. And for those familiar with some of the earlier generations of pistols, this locking block is constructed quite differently. Not necessarily better or worse, it's just different. This pin goes in from, because I always take it out from left to right, I put it in in the reverse order from right to left, and I need to just manipulate the, the trigger and this guy a little bit to get it started. There we go, once it gets going, it's nice and easy. And unlike the earlier models, which had a spring here that you had to be careful to make sure was lined up, once this one gets going, it just goes in all the way. Push it until it stops. It shouldn't be protruding on the other side. Then the spring tension on the slide locking lever has engaged in the notch on here correctly. And as long as you can't easily push it from either side, then it's incorrectly and it's not gonna work its way loose. The frame is quick and easy to reassemble and the slide should follow suit quite simply. Start off with the firing pin safety and that has got a big notch cut out of it for the extractor to be located. So when you install this, make sure Firstly, that this little spring stays in place. And that this notch is to the outside of the slide. It only goes in the one way, so you've kind of forced to do that. Depress, push this in, compressing the spring and then the extractor can drop into place and the two hold each other in place under that spring pressure. The extractor depressor plunger assembly with the black plastic piece or white in the case of a 40 cal goes in next and that's going to the rear of the slide. On the firing pin assembly, when you do need to take that apart, compress the spring and it comes apart quite simply. Uh, inside the earlier generations was a firing pin channel liner. I haven't had any come out of the Gen 5, so I'm not sure that it's still, still there. It's not something that you normally see, but it's a similar black plastic piece to that uh, on the earlier models at least. The firing pin for reassembly what you want to do is just uh, have a visual look, especially around the tip, to make sure that it looks intact and in one piece, that uh, no bits are broken off, that there's no sharp edges. Now, it's, I never have enough hands to reassemble this, so there's a useful pro tip to use the back of your slide for the reassembly. It allows much easier compression of the spring, put one of the cups in place and then the second one is usually quite simple to, to follow and always let things go under control to make sure that they're in properly. This one is not, yeah, now it is. And the extra hand from the back of the slide really makes a difference. Once you've verified that the spring cups are nicely and uniformly seated, then install the firing pin and it should go in 
without any real resistance. Lastly, we want to install the rear slide, the, the rear plate in the back of the slide. And to do that, I compress the firing, the back of the firing pin assembly with my thumb, slide the uh, cover plate partially in place, depress the extractor depressor plunger assembly. And when this doesn't go in properly, check the extractor that it is free to move. If it's not going in properly, remove it. Check the, the tension, that feels better. I've learned over the years not to force things too much and they should just slide into place nice and easily. If they don't, find out what's going wrong before you overstress things. The check to make sure that everything is working correctly here is to hold it up, push that in, and then you can see and hear the firing pin fall to the front. Make sure it can retract all the way to the rear and that it can fall freely under its own weight and then the assembly is correct. The final step is to reinstall the barrel. On this, there's no up or down or right or wrong, except on the barrel itself, there's a kind of two notches. The top notch is um, what locks into the slide lock, the disassembly part, and there's a front part which has got a circular or semi-circular cutout, which is where the back of the recoil system goes into. So when the recoil system is installed, there should be a little gap between it and the block on the bottom of the slide. Older models, you have to start from the, from the front. The Gen 5, you can also start from the front, or you can line up those parts of the, this cutout on the, either side of the slide with the front lugs, and then reassemble There we go. That's the reassembly of a Gen 5, a very early Gen 5, characterized by this cutout in the front grip that nobody liked, and also by the absence of front serrations. The later Gen 5s lost that and gained these, making a much nicer pistol to shoot. Thank you for joining me today on the disassembly, reassembly of the Gen 5 Glock pistols. I hope that you learned enough to give you more time to shoot.